Hi, and welcome to 3DMotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells. I'm a senior 3D artist. In this Tips and Tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at TopoGun. We're going to look at uh, not how to create polygons, but we're going to look at how to create polygons with something called tubes. Uh, tubes was not in the first iteration of uh, TopoGun. It used to be if you wanted to create these horns, you'd have to do it the old-fashioned way. Clicking in, that's like this, say. And then, of course, building the polygons this way, hit bridge. And that was usually the simple way, an original way, to, to build those kind of polygons. Of course, now we can do something a lot easier, a lot quicker. Let me just go ahead and delete these for you. And there we go. By the way, uh, it's left mouse alt to rotate around middle mouse alt to pan and right mouse alt to zoom in and zoom out All right. so again uh, let's look at tubes now tubes is a really awesome way to make things just like this and it's what it says it is it's basically creating a tube so if we click the tube button okay generally in fact we, we it starts off with eight eight subdivisions in other words imagine a cylinder that has eight sides now, in fact, this particular horn actually should have 16 because of the divisions we have here. So we will go ahead and just ramp it up to 16. Now, it, it is a projection, so you want to try and get as clean a projection as possible. You don't want to try and project in this direction because it will, in fact, try to read the horn in the background. You don't want to try it from this direction because it's actually going to read some of the face and it's going to get very confused. So you want to try and keep it as clean, as clear as possible. So I know if I can angle in something like this, I can probably get a really good, really good cut with this. Right? I'm not overlapping anything and uh, it should be able to read it. There's nothing interfering in the back. So let's go ahead and just do a quick one. All I have to do is left click and drag. All right. So imagine you're, you're looking to have these subdivisions, these edge loops running right up here. So we can just go down, or go up it I should say, but it'll get smaller and smaller. Now to show that it's a projection, I can use my middle mouse and, and the uh, Alt key to go ahead and pan it right off. And you can see this has stayed there. It has stayed in the projection mode. It's literally what you're going to turn around and place and move make this real all you have to do is right click once you've got that drawn now as you can see it did a really quick fantastic uh, iteration for the horn now I just have to seal it at the top and of course make connectors uh, down in this middle section right here just so it would connect up which of course isn't very hard at all as you can see it would happen really really quick really really easy if I hit control Z just to undo it I want to show you what happens though when you don't quite do it correctly. Now, usually when I'm going to show something like this, one of the first things students do is they'll draw a line and then they draw another one and another one. I'm not sure if you caught what I just did for all of this, but now if I hit right click it, you can see it's really messed up. It's really wonky it's actually inverting. If we turn off the reference, you can see how it's actually inverted polygons. It's trying to connect vertices to vertices, but in a totally convoluted manner. It did that because of the way it was drawn. When you're going to use the tubes, you have to imagine you're building a tube and you're stacking the tube up, so you need to make sure that you stay in one direction. If you draw from top to bottom then stay top to bottom all the way through all right do something like that and right click it and you're fine or of course you can go from bottom to top something like this and again right click and it makes it real also what you can do uh, I've told my students you don't have to make all the different subdivisions if you don't want what you can do is plan ahead do something like really close for this one piece. If you want to do something like that and then do something like that and right click and again as you can see this is really really low polygon but the nice thing is, is I can go to the simple edit mode make sure my edges are on you can double click it click connect 
and then of course I can go in and connect and here connect you can do the same up here you just go in here there we go and connect it and as you can see it lays it starts laying them all down for you a whole lot easier so it just depends there's a number of different ways you want to be you that you can do this and you can move them around and and move them as you need to etc let's just go ahead and undo all of this but you don't have to like I said you don't have to get really really complicated by the way I love the number of undos it does it keeps everything I love that uh, topo gun is awesome it really is but again with the tubes you want to try and and keep it simple for yourself now if you know that for instance for this particular model if you know you're not going to use a lot of uh, polygons for the horns they aren't going to be something that are going to be important we could in fact go ahead and drop this down to the eight and what we could do is just ramp up the number of subdivisions very briefly something like that and then of course we could blend these pieces together and this way you have a face that has higher polygon density and a uh, horn that necessarily doesn't if you look if we go in for bridging in fact we can just go in right now really quickly in fact uh, do something like this we'll go and seal that one hole in just a second and as you can see we're just blending this all down connecting it up okay something like that and there alright if I click off the reference you can see we now have where the face has a lot of polygon density so that it will support animations etc and the horn less so because it's likely not going to be that important or that animated etc okay and then, of course we could cap the tops if we need to let's go ahead and try a different file so we can try something a little bit different with the tubes okay so we have a spider or a type of spider it was a, some fantasy spider for a game I, I worked on obviously to try and do something like this would be well it'd be a little bit of work of course with a a retopologizer like Topagun it would actually be done quicker than you might think however uh, we're just going to go ahead and look at the, the tubes insofar as working on these legs. Again, if you were to have to do these legs by hand, even though if you're only doing one side so you could make it symmetrical and flip it to the other side, boy, it, it'd probably take you a little while. However, with the tubes, of course, we can do something like this, angle it around, get a good angle on this. Say, let's try just try this one leg here. We go for our tubes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 8. And again, I'm going to just draw like we have. I get some f fair divisions. You know, it's a little fat here, then it starts to get thinner, so I go ahead and drop one in, and it's a little bigger there. You just kind of have to play with it when you're working on it. If I right click, and there you go. Pretty quick, pretty simple. Uh, I could do the same over here, let's say, for this particular leg. All right. Again, I'm going to draw and I'm going to make sure I stay in the same angle or on the same side, the same drawing from left to right. Okay? Because I don't want to overlap it. I don't want any of those twisties. Okay? So something like that. There you go. Again, I could even do it for this piece right in here. So I'm not worried about the spike that much because I can add that in later on something like this there you go and of course then it's just a matter of sealing it right in here which of course I can use the bridge tool for go right on in just rotate this around there we go it's just a matter of rotating it around and again I'm using a combination of the uh, left alt and middle mouse alt to pan and rotate pan and rotate okay and one right in here okay and in this particular joint since we know we want to look to have that so it's animatable I probably just double click it and connect it so it puts a cut in there 
Might even do that again on one of the joints right here. And then on probably right in here as well. Do another connect. That's for animation purposes. Make sure it's going to have some good polygon connection there. Okay. Of course, I could turn around and now do this section. What I might look to do. Oh, and as you can see, let's see, we've got uh, one piece right in here. We can just angle this around a little bit. Oops, let's go for our vertices. There we go. I've got something right up in here. Oh, it's run right through. Okay. Yeah, I thought that did that. I accidentally moved it, and it, of course, then stretched it way out. I wondered why it looked like there was a polygon way down, or a vertice way down there. Okay. There we go. So now, of course, I could come in here and just very easily, you know, make connectors to this. We could use the bridge tool again. Um, after, again, the tolerance on the bridge tool only goes so far. So, of course, you might have to go in and do a little bit of tweaking with that. There we go. And I'll rotate this around a little bit more. Oops. There we go. And this is one of those that, begin, uh, again, because of its tolerance, uh, we might have to look to actually use our cre the simple Create button, just to hold our Control key down to snap from vertice to vertice, which is what I was doing right there. And, of course, I've got to do one right off in here. Snap, and then hold down my Control and Snap. Again, I can now go back in here, go to our edges, double-click, and we can go ahead and connect. And then I can grab, oops, let's grab this one instead and connect. And again, grab this and connect. So we've got that set for animation purposes. Again, if I click off the reference, you can see that this model will now work. This will now, that will now bend at that joint and bend at that joint and still have enough polygons to be able to accommodate that. From there, of course, you could turn around and easily create the other three legs. You can, in fact, do these little pinchers with the tubes tool. And then, of course, model the uh, rest of the model with using the different uh, simple create and make the, the torso and the head and everything else. Once you've got that all done, you could easily mirror it over and you're done. All right, well, anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. That, that's that been Tubes in Topagun. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.